got skirt, skirt, out of here, bitch. What's going on, my pretty pandas? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome to the next episode, or another episode of Psychologically Gaming, where in this episode, I was trying to decide actually what character to do, and I was about to tweet out. I was about to tweet out this morning, hey, what character should a girl do for this episode of Psychologically Gaming? But it's okay, fam. It's okay. I got it. I got it. I was able to think of something. Now, I remember posting a tweet about not really sure about psychologically analyzing animals in games because animals tend to have like a pure mindset they don't have a lot of the uh, <laughs> intrusive thoughts as humans do where we have free will so we're free to do anything animals they're based off of instinct and they go off of more of like i said this pure instinct of I mean, I think love and compassion because I love animals, so I always try to think the best of them and not that they're like ravenous, hungry beasts out to kill us. So it's really hard because they don't have the range of emotions that humans tend to have. So, I mean, you know, unless you're a sociopath and you know, you're kind of void of all emotion entirely. <laughs> Next episode on Shane Dawson reacts. Who knows? Maybe it'll be animals. <laughs> Shane should totally do like a conspiracy theory video on animals. Like how their free will is and if they have emotion or anything. Is that like too much? No? But yeah, animals don't have the range of emotions that uh, humans tend to have. So for me, it was kind of like, how can you really analyze them? But this character came up and I was like, oh, the character that I am going to be reviewing today psychologically is Scooby-Doo. Now, technically, I am still staying within the realm of gaming because there was a Scooby-Doo game. Actually, there were multiple Scooby-Doo games, but it was first and foremost a show that was created in 1969 and it went into like the early 2000s. It's still going, but it's not the same kind of Scooby-Doo. You know what I'm talking about? I feel like trying to understand Scooby is more philosophical in a way because whenever you're going into his personality, he has this kind of like raw, raw, raggy kind of, kind of, I'm not going to try to imitate Scooby-Doo again. That was just bad. Has this persona about him that he's kind of like the Fiddler on the Roof. There's this one character in the movie, Fiddler on the Roof. He's basically this kind of like I don't know, guardian angel. He's the overseer. He's looking at everybody, analyzing everyone, their actions, what they're doing, who they are. Basically, they're in, he's the, the seer. He's the gargoyle of the universe. Too many references that people are not going to get. What I mean by when I say also gargoyle is that he's seeing everything. He's the observer, you know, the fiddler on the roof. That's why I compare Scooby-Doo to the fiddler on the roof. He's emotionally taking everything in one Scooby snack at a time. And he's there, like his best friend Shaggy gets into all these shenanigans. And whenever, like, think of it as like a real dog. Whenever they see us leave the house for work or something like that, they get so emotional and they think we've been gone for years or forever. We have to think of it from that perspective. Like, if Scooby Doo sees like Shaggy get into very tumultuous things, he's going to assume that, oh no, he's dying. When in reality, he's fighting for himself. You know what I mean? And I feel like he, that's the same way that every character is in accordance to how Scooby-Doo sees them because Scooby-Doo is kind of like, I don't know, the one who's constantly worried, the one who's constantly afraid, and that's how dogs typically are. They're protectors, but they also are afraid of a lot of things that they don't understand. Like ghosts, like, you know, Batman and Robin. He didn't know what the hell was going on. I also feel like psychologically he is very frustrated a lot of the time that he has to try to communicate with the Scooby gang because he is like <laughs> like he speaks in kind of like this broken doggy English if I even want to say that you know and it's one of the sweetest most innocent characters I've ever seen in a TV show because he shows his genuine love and compassion for his friends for the Scooby gang and every time that he sees one of them like I said get into trouble he gets worried but then he's like <laughs> he's also happy because he understands that oh okay my friend didn't die also I feel like he has a hardcore addiction to some Scooby snacks like seriously we could go into the fact that he could be addicted to the Scooby snacks actually it's a negative reinforcement now that I think about it I'm just thinking about this now it could be a negative reinforcement that every time they fight a bad guy he gets a Scooby snack so <laughs> so Velma or Daphne whoever is giving him Scooby snacks they are enforcing a, a like a, a positive negative reinforcement you do a negative thing and you get a Scooby snack so it's it's such a oh my god this show is so deep also, you could go psychologically into the other characters' minds. Are they actually experiencing different forms of illusions that they're having? Are they really hearing this dog talk? Are they really witnessing 
something deeper than what's actually going on like are they uh, just a bunch of kids who are getting high in the 70s thinking that they're going on all these monster trips whenever they're just in their parents basement it's basically like that 70s show oh my god that 70s show is a live action version of scooby-doo <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> but next up is our cream word of the day and our cream word of the day actually i should say words because we're going over two cream words of the day today the first one is ani ani means no in korean so if you want to say no to something just go ani and i'm thinking of going over uh, vowels and consonants as well that way you guys know how it's broken down because a lot of the time most of the time, a lot of the time, the um, the romanization of Korean words is off, but by a lot. You know, it gives you an overview of how it's pronounced, but it doesn't really give you the exact pronunciation. And when I watch a lot of translation videos, uh, like for BTS or K drama or something like that, sometimes the romanization, even within the show, that way it's Americanized, not Americanized, you guys know what I mean, like the translations that they give for the romanization for Americans to watch, sometimes it's off. And I'm hearing the pronunciation, I'm going back to my book, like what they said was incorrect. But there are different characters, there are different vowels and consonants that go into each word. And there are different blocking formats that you can actually do, which I can get into in my vlogging channel. By the way, go subscribe, the link will be at the end of this video. But when you have ani, the word ani, which means no, you have a. Because this character that I'm going to- actually, I'm going to put the word right, right over here, that way I can talk about it. The character that looks like an o is basically a placeholder for a lot of words. I have the character a right next to the one that looks like an O, so A, ah, and then you have N, E. The line is always an I sound, and the one that looks like an L is a N sound, so that's what gives you A, ah, N, E. Which is no, so if you want to say A, N, E, you say no. Now if you want to say yes, it's really simple, you just say yay. Or you say, like a lot of the times, if I'm gonna be honest, I whenever I hear someone in Korea say ye, it says more like de. It sounds so much like de, if, if I'm being honest, because it's like, okay, is it de or ye? Sometimes I get confused, but it is ye. And I know it sounds really, really complicated at first. Trust me, I had so many issues with, oh my god, what? how does this pronunciation make up this word? And why does it sound like this if it's like this? And it's it's confusing at first, but trust me, once you practice it over and over again, it's like <gasps> a light bulb clicks in your head. It's like, I understand, finally. So yeah, now we have the word no, which is ani. And then you have the word yes, which is ye. But yeah, if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every weekday. Stay casually nerdy, you guys, and I will talk to you all in tomorrow's video, which is another episode of Red Dead Redemption 2. Peace. I found, I, I actually have some, some hangul in here that I go by as my little cheat sheet sometimes. So if you guys want like a little cheat sheet, those are all the, uh, the consonants and the vowels. The vowels are up top and the consonants down below. You're welcome, ho. Thank you.